After failing to win yet another Pokemon League Championship, this time in Hoenn, Ash and friends return to Kanto to take part in the Battle Frontier. This season of the anime consists of major battles against the Frontier Brains, who are basically the same as gym leaders, though there are only seven, and there is no League Conference. For this run, I've decided to play through a Battle Frontier ROM hack, using the same team Ash did for every major battle, in addition to a few other rules. This hack does a decent job hitting all the major anime plot points, though you'll notice pretty quickly there are some English problems. But I'll give Ankit a pass, because English is not his first language. Ash starts off back in Kanto by the Viridian City Gym. I meet Scott and Agatha for the first time, and hear about the Battle Frontier. Inside the gym, Scott volunteers me to fight Agatha. Thanks, man. She has a level 5 Gengar, and I my trusty Pikachu. Hypnosis keeps me asleep way longer than it should, and Pikachu doesn't make it. It turns out though, I have my entire Hoenn team. So, after some scheming, Glalie comes out to bite the Gengar. In the anime, Ash loses the fight, because he's an idiot. Pikachu, use quick attack! Oh. Pika! 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 Oh, right, normal attacks don't work against ghost type! Good trainer? He tried to use quick attack on a ghost. Don't patronize him, old lady. Impressed by my loss, Scott explains more about the Battle Frontier and that there are several battle brains, which is a really weird term, that I need to find and defeat. By the way, some of the routes and cities in this game are similar to OG Kanto, but not quite the same. Viridian City, for example, has more of a city feel to it. I get to Pallet Town and encounter a young lady who is obviously imagining things. Crazy people in the streets? Kanto has really gone downhill since I've last been here. At least my home is bigger. It looks like this is the right place in mime, because all of my friends are here. And Tracy too. Even though the house looks bigger on the outside, all of the extra space went into making a larger hallway. Mom still doesn't get a room. These two extra houses are locked, so let's just head to Oak's lab, which is much improved compared to the normal games. It actually looks like a laboratory. Tracy and Oak both congratulate me on my Hoenn loss, which is weird, especially since they used the exact same words. Almost as if they rehearsed it. Then, May wants to meet my Pokemon, but she is left on a cliffhanger because Team Rocket appears to do what Team Rocket always does, annoy me with their theme song. When they finally finish, a battle begins, and they use their Hoenn Pokemon, Cacnea and Surviper. But between my Light Ball Pikachu and Swellow, we send Team Rocket blasting off again. At this point, Ash decides unilaterally to leave Torkoal and Galalie at the lab, and picks up Fampy instead. The turtle, I can understand. He's too slow. But Glalie is one of his better Pokemon. Why does he always make these runs so hard on me? As a side note, all my Pokemon are holding items. Some of them make a lot of sense, like the Light Ball and Groval's favorite stick, but why Pokeballs? Oak and Tracy did not take my advice, after all, saying the exact same thing again. With that, I'm on my way through Viridian City. Or not. Apparently, there is an invisible barrier here. Is this your doing, Mimey? Good thing there's another path so I can skip the forest entirely. I try to say hi to Brock on my way through Pewter, but Ash refuses to enter the gym. Instead, Brock runs to catch up to me as I leave town. Just like old times, huh? After getting through a slightly changed Mount Moon, I might as well try to replace Misty's bike while I'm in Cerulean. Too bad they still cost a boatload of money. The gym looks different from the outside, and Misty decides to stay here and be a responsible gym leader, unlike her lame sisters. I find another crazy guy who seems to think that Team Rocket has destroyed his house. Yeah, this place looks like crap. In the show, while looking for Numero Uno Battle Brain, Ash and friends get completely lost. We've been around 50 corners by now! I'm sorry, you guys. I thought my Pokenav might have been broken, but luckily it was just me. In order to recreate that feeling of despair, I too get lost and have no idea where to go. I figure there has to be something cool at Bill's house, so I avoid Nugget Bridge and all those loser trainers. <laughs> but there's nothing there. Okay, it's official. I am lost, but it's totally on purpose for sure. Eventually, I make my way towards Rock Tunnel where I see the legendary bird overhead. That is a symbol from life that I'm going the right way. Scott finally helps me find the Battle Factory now that I've already found it. Noland is the first battle brain, and he allows me to pick which Pokemon I want to face. He gives me a huge list of possibilities, and Ash, being Ash, decides to pick Articuno, who was not on that list. 
Just in time, Charizard returns from the Charific Valley, and he has a pretty stacked moveset. But I only need one, because in the Battle Factory, he outspeeds and one-shots the Articuno with an overheat. Things were a bit more exciting in the show. I get the knowledge symbol and am told by Little Maxi that the battle arena is in Saffron City. Unfortunately, Charizard takes off once again, leaving Ash high and dry. Before heading through Rock Tunnel, I find a sign pointing to Cinnabar. There is no way somebody dug an underground tunnel from here all the way to Cinnabar. Look how far that is. But it turns out they did. I guess digging is a lot easier with Pokemon who work for free. But I don't work for free, so subscribe to the channel and help support my work by watching all of these awesome videos. I get through the newly arranged rock tunnel without issues and arrive in Saffron just in time for the Pokemon contest. So I need to sit through this boring show and pretend to support May. Battles are way more exciting. Before the battle arena though, we need to learn a bit more about sweet baby James and how stinking rich that guy could be. This is one of my summer cottages. <laughs> You call this a cottage? Instead, he likes to stalk a bunch of kids in an attention-seeking hot air balloon and try to steal their pets. I really don't understand why. Against Greta, the Wheel of Frontier determines this to be a two-on-two -two battle. Grovile does okay against the Hariyama, but the only reason he survives is because Greta keeps trying to use Focus Punch. I mean, Arm Thrust did a ton, so that fat sumo could easily have won, but I guess not. Next is Medicham. And I know I'm going to regret this, but after a single Leaf Blade, I decide to stay true to the show and use Snorlax against a fighting Pokemon. The other fat sumo comes out and actually survives a Focus Punch. I mean, he is 5 levels higher, but that's just the level he came at. Just like Ash, I order Snorlax to finish the battle with a Hyper Beam. And I get the Guts symbol, which is kind of ironic, because in the very next brain fight, my theatrical tactics revolve around Guts. But it turns out, you get healed at the start of the battle, meaning I am now supposed to defeat an Arcanine and a Swampert with a healthy Swallow and a Corphish. As you might have guessed, this ends up not happening, and we get the first loss of the run. Without Guts, I need a new plan. It still requires a bit of luck, but here we go. After being intimidated, Swallow uses Return on the Arcanine, who mirror moves it right back in a super pathetic way. Swampert misses Dynamic Punch, thankfully, and the Fire Dog is Bubble Beam crit by Corphish. Nice! He would have fallen next turn without a crit anyway. Swampert protects as Swallow focuses energy to try and get a crit to bypass the attack drop. Swampert misses a few more times, and every time he almost falls, he gets full restored instead. That's really not fair. Eventually though, my counter plan works, as Swampert knocks himself out with a mud shot. If only I could have used Guts, that would have been quite a bit easier. Because without it, Swallow sucks. Victor does the whole, it's behind your ear trick, but with the tactic symbol. And Ash loves every minute of it. He is only 10 after all. Then, after reversing the charges against Team Rocket, Ash's little fan P evolves into Dawn Fan and learns Hyper Beam. With that, I travel to Fuchsia, where they still have all these Pokemon in cages, but turn the Safari Zone into a Battle Pike. Lucy is the Queen of the Serpentine, and it's once again a 2v2, just not a double battle. My Ground-type Dawn Fan has no ground moves because he hasn't learned any yet, and Dig is not in Cerulean City. So the advantage I might have had, well, it doesn't exist. But that's fine, since a Fury Attack, combined with Flail, knocks out the Flaming Surviper. Melotic misses Hydro Pump on the Pikachu Swap, thankfully, and then falls to a 150 power Volt Tackle that apparently does no recoil damage in this game. I don't know about you, but a light ball Pikachu with an electric hyper beam like move seems a bit excessive to me. Either way, I get the luck symbol. The next brain is near the Seafoam Islands, so I have to go off the beaten path. On the way, we all enter a Pokemon orienteering competition that James wins with the help of Mime Jr. He then shows that he is not just a selfish rich kid by giving away all his food prize to the protagonists. Excuse me, I was wondering if you'd consider donating the fruit to Ash Ketchum and his friends? Which is a perfect example of Ash plot armor. Even when he loses the competition, he still gets the prize. After a bit more traveling, Grovile becomes smitten with a Meganium. But he's an odd Pokemon out because Meganium already has a boyfriend in Tropius. Grovile becomes so depressed that even after evolving, he temporarily forgets how to use any of his moves. 
but after a kaboom with a view, he gets better. The Battle Palace is located on Metallic Island, and his leader is Spencer. His shift tree tries to double team, but Sceptile has Aerial Ace, so it's pointless. At this point, I decide to bring out Heracross, because this is the only time I'm going to use him in the entire run. Ash keeps his very best Pokemon boxed away. As always, Heracross does not understand the meaning of consent, and the Megahorn takes out the Venusaur, followed by the Clay Doll too. what I tell ya, this bug is the best. Which obviously means, after getting the spirit symbol, he goes right back into the box, never to return. Before long, I get to Cremony Town, where Annabelle waits in the Battle Tower. Ash talks a good game, but eventually loses to her Metagross. I, on the other hand, do defeat her thanks to Tauros and Pikachu. Not that it matters, because the second time's the charm. Tauros uses Takedown on Alakazam, and then swaggers the Metagross. This could be a risk, but hopefully it works out. After hitting himself in confusion, a single Volt Tackle takes him out. Even at full health, I doubt Pika will survive this Espeon, so let's try to fully paralyze him. It, uh, doesn't end up working. And then, Espeon survives a takedown too, but now he is fully paralyzed. Good thing too, I didn't want to leave this fight up to Corphish of all Pokemon. After getting the ability symbol, we learn that the Battle Pyramid is near Pewter City, for now. It turns out the Battle Pyramid is mobile, and upon entering, Ash has to battle the enemy within, as he is possessed by the King of Pocalantis, who was stored in the Millennium Puzzle. Brandon challenges the King to a fight, and in the anime, he wins. But here, Sceptile makes short work of Reggie Rock. Pikachu electrocutes Ash back to sanity, and then Brandon appears upset at Ash for being possessed? Young man, that evil spirit was attracted to you by your own uncontrolled arrogance. Talk about victim blaming, jeesh. This means I don't get the last symbol just yet. Instead, I head towards Indigo Plateau, and, for once, am not stopped by any loser guards or water. But I need a new Pokemon to challenge this battle zone. Fortunately, a wild Apom has been following me around, so for the first and only time this entire run, I catch a Pokemon. And it's a super exciting one, too. And there was much rejoicing. Nurse Joy is pleased with my capturing abilities, and wants to help me prepare for the last brain battle by battling me herself. That's a very kind offer there, Joy. So naturally, I hyperbeam her Chansey right in its stupid face. Overjoyed by my victory, I enter Indigo Plateau, and naturally deposit all of my Pokémon in the box, besides my least favorite. Of course Torkoal's the only one he's gonna keep. Now, it's on to Brandon Round 2. This is a 1v1, and obviously, my Torkoal makes short work of his Ridgy Steel. In real life, however, that is not how it goes down, and Ash loses again. How hard is it for a fire Pokemon to beat a Steel? Come on, man. Jumping ahead a few episodes, Ash, with the help of Oak, Tracy, and Officer Jenny, gathers the gang of four in preparation for the final Brendan rematch. After all, everyone knows that Ash's strongest fighters include Squirtle, Bulbasaur, and Pikachu. With the team stacked with such basic Pokemon, how could he ever lose? After reminiscing about the good old days when Ash was only a 10 year old, Sitting here like this makes me think of the first time I met you. And chasing away Team Rocket, it's time to pace towards the final frontier. Here, Charizard takes out Dusclops and two flamethrowers, and could easily defeat Ninjask, but in the show, Squirtle defeats this bug, so let's try it out. Six double teams and four hydro pump misses later, Squirtle simply can't do it, and he falls. In his place, out comes Pikachu to static paralyze, and then knock it out with a thunderbolt. Bulbasaur takes a whopping 5 damage from the Soul Rock as he swaps in, and thanks to an Oran Berry, does manage to survive the encounter, defeating it with a few Razor Leaves. Last is Brandon's Reggie Ice. Bulba makes the ultimate sacrifice to Leech Seed this guy, allowing Charizard to Flamethrower. Since this victory is supposed to be won by Pikachu, I allow him to come out on a full restore, and to try to win this battle with Volt Tackle, just like Show Pika does, but a single Ice Beam connects to knock him out. That's really not fair, because in the anime, Pikachu survives like a million direct Ice Beam hits. Even getting frozen multiple times. And mine can't even take one? Regardless, Charizard, who really could have soloed this fight, makes his return to do nothing. Thanks, Leech Seed. Immediately after winning the Brave Symbol, Ash turns down a Battle Frontier Brain position, opting for a nomadic lifestyle instead. 
Charizard, Bulbasaur, and Squirtle are not about that life, so they take off. But before you take off, there are still two whole episodes to cover. In Terracotta Town, Sceptile is reeling because he was replaced in the championship battle by a leafy dino. So I make it up to him with one more battle. Actually, it's a Pokemon contest, where Mei and I have to fight to the death. This would be difficult if Sceptile wasn't 11 levels higher than her Blaziken, and he has Aerial Ace. So yeah, it actually ends in a tie, so the medal is cut in half. After which Mei promptly leaves. She probably hates me for being immediately good at something that she sucked at for two whole seasons. Speaking of sucking, Ash returns home to start a battle with Gary, only to lose. But not me. My supercharged Pikachu defeats this never-before-seen Pokemon to finish the run with a flourish. With that, Gary runs away to Sinnoh to study more Pokemon, and Ash follows him like a lost puppy, ending this season of the anime. And that is the Battle Frontier. I did consider doing this run in Emerald, just using Ash's Pokemon, but this ROM hack allowed me to follow the main anime plot points really well to continue the story that we've already started. The next Ash video will obviously take place in Sinnoh, so subscribe to make sure you don't miss it. And I'll see you in the next region. What kinds of Pokemon await him in the Sinnoh region? This new chapter of Ash's journey to become a Pokemon master is just beginning, so stay tuned!